And in the beauty of all things Trinidad and Tobago, a blessing we can all say, we go from speaking about Laudi to talking about African History Month and what's taking place. So Mojuba Igungun is happening. It's an introduction to ancestral veneration in the Ifodorisa tradition. Joining us in studio this morning, we have Arabo Latunje Sumurin, the co-founder and director of Quito's Ifa Institute, and Attila Springer, director of the Ida Kida Group. Good morning to both of you. Good, Good morning. morning. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank, Thank you. For for being here so early in the morning as well because I know that you're both going to be pretty busy with everything we have coming up. Yes, yes, it's, <laughs> a, it's, it's a busy, but I mean, you know, our lives are busy anyway, regardless of what is going on. It so, is. All time is busy. Listen, to, and speaking about all time being busy, particularly as November, so it's African History Month, and we need to start with a history question in particular, because the Orisa tradition is so visible, and it survives so strongly in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, wouldn't other people from West Africa have brought their own traditions as well? How come Orisa is so prominent and most recognizable as a spiritual practice today? Um, yes, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, so, so we know that in Trinidad we had indentured laborers who came from India and the Indian continent, mm -hmm. but we also had indentured laborers who came from West Africa. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happened in 1807 was that the slave trade, so the trade in human bodies from the African continent was abolished in 1807. And so between 1807 and the actual abolition of enslavement, there was a situation where slave ships were still leaving the continent, but the British Navy was sort of responsible for patrolling the seas and making sure that people were not still trading in enslaved Africans. Um, and so between 1807 and 1833, there was a situation where ships were intercepted and sometimes people were taken to Sierra Leone where there's a free town, mm -hmm. but but from 1833 go forward, there was a situation where Africans came to places like Trinidad who had never been enslaved. Okay. They, they might have been kidnapped, but they were not enslaved. Um, and some of them came as indentured laborers. So we had a situation where we had something like 6,000 indentured Africans who came between 1833 and 1871. Um, and many of these people who came were Yoruba people. And when they entered into the population of Africans who lived in Trinidad, they brought with them um, not just their cultural forms, like their masking traditions, etc., but they also brought with them their spirituality. And there would have been Yoruba people before emancipation in Trinidad, but in large part, you know, this new influx of people, and many of them actually came from Oyo State, which is a state in the Yoruba part of what is now called Nigeria. And they, um, they came with their, their very, very strong traditions. Um, and that is why we have such strong Yoruba-related masking traditions, especially in the carnival space. And so... <clears throat> So the language, the religion, the food, even something like susu, mm -hmm. which um, susu comes from a uh, Yoruba word. Please correct me. Yeah, yeah, go <laughs> a susu. You don't wear. Um, and uh, you know those those sort of um, in influences and injections into our Trinidad and Tobago African cultures. What happened in the post emancipation period? So it's a very interesting thing that. Um, took place in Trinidad, and it also took place in other places. So like Brazil got a large influx of Yoruba people after, I mean, emancipation happened um, in the Portuguese countries in the 1860s. Mm -hmm. But you know, in Cuba, they also got a huge influx of Yoruba people as well. And so if you look at the, the story of where Orisha tradition survives and is the strongest, Trinidad is one of the places Brazil is one of the places, and um, Cuba is one of the places. And if we go back to that great song that won the road march in 1986, um, David Rennes' Bahia Girl, mm -hmm. there's a part in it where he says, 
Then she sat and noticed, wait, like you is a Baptist. She said, darling, no, no, my darling is not so. Trinidad and Brazil, we have the same vibration. Ileife, Ileife, she make me to understand. Mm -hmm. Ileife is a city in Nigeria. Nigeria. But from a spiritual point of view, it's also the place of origin of all Yoruba people. So that's, that's a little history lesson, <laughs> a quick history lesson there that, that, that gives a context as to why the Orisha tradition is so strong in Trinidad. And that's a great history lesson, less lesson, let's say lesson, <laughs> a great history lesson to share with us this morning. Thank you so much, Atilla. And let's get into the conversation now. I mean, there's so much that you just said that could literally turn into a 40, 40 yes, minute exactly. interview, but we're not doing that this morning. Hopefully we can another time, but let's bring you into the conversation this morning. Speaking about traditions, um, what about ancestral veneration? First of all, let's delve into exactly what it is and just how we can all do that as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Um, what K2C Fire Institute and Edakeda is doing is this workshop that I will see as an introduction to ancestral veneration. Mm -hmm. Ancestral veneration is a universal concept. Even plants have ancestors, what they call grandparents in other creatures. So let us look at it from this way. Nobody fall off from the sky. We were all given back to by our mommy and our daddy. Mm -hmm. Whether we know them, or we don't know them, whether they play their role or they don't, somebody donated the two essential ingredients, what we call ato and ashe, that is the sperm and the egg. Mm -hmm. So looking at it from that point of view, every one of us has an ancestor, mm -hmm. and we should be responsible or give thanks to that medium that the Creator will have used to bring in us into this situation into this realm of existence. So these are one of the things we want people to know. And whether we like it or not, some of us will also become ancestor over time. Some of us are already ancestor. And it is not only even when you are able to bring forward an offspring biologically. Ancestral veneration also includes those who will have mentor, model, and help you to shape you to become who you are. They are your ancestors, including teachers in schools, mm -hmm. colleagues at work, seniors. And so this is what ancestral veneration is all about. We are also going to make sure people get to know and understand what it means to be born and also to transit. Mm -hmm. Because in the tradition of the Yoruba people, the Farisha tradition, death is not really the world. We believe that life is a continuous cycle and it continues there. So we need to understand the order of life that we were born and at some point we are going to transit. And we also know that from every ancient tradition, every one, every creature that is given birth to will exit at one time. Plant die, animal die, tangible and intangible's life come to an end. And that end is not an absolute end, it's an end that also leads to the beginning of another beginning. Mm -hmm. So these are part of what the workshop is going to be all about. How do we deal with the loss of a loved one of our family member? And how do we continuously make sure we preserve the heritage of those who will have given back to us? And so on and so forth. Oh my goodness, it sounds like it's going to be a fantastic workshop. Who is this workshop for though? Um, I think it's for anyone who wants information. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, we live in a society where we talk about being tolerant, yeah. we talk about being inclusive, but you know, we still see vestiges of people showing fear um, of difference, fear of quote unquote um, non Abrahamic religions. Yeah. And so, even on the weekend, we saw some manifestations of that with resistance to even the concept of Diwali. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, this, this conversation, this workshop is for people who are looking for information. You know, we, we are not interested in converting people. We mm -hmm. are interested in enlightening and empowering people. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, as Baba said, we have ancestral veneration as part of all traditions. Yeah. You know, Hindus just came out of Pitri Paksh mm -hmm. um, season, right? Um, in the Jewish tradition, there is ancestral veneration. In the indigenous tradition, there is ancestral veneration. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for 
those people of African de descent who were brought here, mm -hmm. although we have a strong underground Orisha tradition, yeah. in a lot of ways, um, African spirituality was demonized to the point of people just absolutely fearing its existence. Yep. And so, you know, there's, there is a lot of misinformation. There is a lot of lack of understanding. And so we start with ancestral veneration because um, ancestral veneration is, is such a basic part of, I mean, you know, it's like, yeah. take for example, something that we do in Trinidad. When you open a bottle of rum, you pour the full yeah, set <laughs> for those who are not here. Mm -hmm. I mean, even that is a form of ancestral veneration that we do not recognize. I'm glad you included that um, as a very simple. We all do it all the time. Some people don't even know. They just know this is something you have to get done. Mm -hmm. We are almost out of time. This conversation could go on for so much longer because yes. there's so much more that we have to learn. But let's talk about where is the workshop taking place? How can we get more information? Right. And so when you, is it? You must register. It's, it's happening on Saturday the 18th mm -hmm. of November. It is taking place just around the corner on Warner Street, okay. number 12, which is the Idacator Group headquarters. Mm -hmm. We are actually celebrating 25 years this year, and um, we have this great new space where we are doing conversations and workshops. We have a shop, that sort of thing. And so the workshop is taking place there, but people can also join online. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at our social media, um, you can look for Kato's IFA Institute on Instagram, Facebook, um, we are, Ida Kata is online, Kambule1881, K-A-M-B-U-L-E, which is, which is also a, a linguistic reclaiming of the Kikongo origin of the word, which, it, which Kambule. So, yeah, okay, just to, just to go into another, <laughs> another piece of history, there are two understandings of the word Kambule. Right. There's C-A-N-B-O-U-L-A-Y, mm -hmm. which, which we know, we, the, we receive this information that it is the burning of the canes, mm -hmm. right? That's one understanding. But then Maureen Wana Lewis, who is a great, great linguist, she studied the African retention, language retentions mm -hmm. in Trinidad. And one of the things that she was able to retrace is that the word Kambule, K-M-B-U-L-E, refers to a Kikongo word meaning procession. Mm -hmm. And in the Central African tradition, there is this thing about um, processing and having a fire procession to work through your trauma and work through the things that are challenging you. So those two ideas come together in the word Kambule. And we are reclaiming the, the, the spelling K-A-M-B-U-L-E to reconnect with the, the Central African tradition and the, the African notion of the procession. Right? So, th so that's another <laughs> little piece of history. But, you know, if, if you want to be part of the workshop on Saturday, as I said, you know, it's both digital and in person. We have limited space in person, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the in person is going to be a lot more fun, I think. I, uh, we, I, we're going we're gonna to be having a good time, and, you know, and there will be a point at which we're going to sing some songs to the ancestors, that kind of thing. I mean, we're not going to actually have the, um, the performance part of it because, you know, it, within the carnival space, there mm -hmm. is also ancestral masquerade that is present in the space. And so all of those things we're going to be talking about on Saturday, it's, it's going to be, and it's an all-day workshop because we have a lot to cover. I mean, you do have a lot to cover, and we definitely need to continue this conversation. Sadly, we are out of time, but that means you just have to come back so we can continue yes. this after yes. Saturday to hear what's going on. So, Atella, thank you so much for being here this morning, and thank you for all that you do for our culture and for our people and our community. Arab Olatunji Sumarin, thank you for being here as well. Thank I'm looking for forward me. to learning a lot more about this workshop and a lot more of our traditions. Trinidad and Tobago, this is the Now Morning Show. There's more coming up. Stay tuned.